Welcome back to Basic Maintenance with Fresh Freight. You found our reefer service walkthrough. Today, we're gonna to give you a basic step-by-step -step guide to servicing a reefer unit. The tools needed, the items needed, and the steps can be found in PDF form on our website. The items needed will be an oil filter, an air filter, and a fuel filter. And of course, oil and fuel to prime the fuel filter and oil to fill the unit when you're finished with the draining. Let's dive into it. First off, the tools needed will be a filter wrench to remove the filters, a ratchet and socket to remove the oil pan drain bolt, a five gallon bucket to catch the oil, a funnel to direct the oil, gloves and rags. And of course, don't forget your personal protective equipment, such as goggles and steel toe boots. Let's talk the steps perform the service. Step one, safety first. Turn off the power disconnect switch. This will look different on different units, but the point is to ensure that the unit will not power up while we're working. With all the advancements in the technology, the dispatcher could easily remotely start the unit, and we don't want that to happen while we're in, when we're inside tearing it apart. Step two, open up the unit, perform the inspection. Ensure that all these items being serviced are easily accessible, and ensure that you don't see any abnormal wear or tear. Note if there is for future repair. Step three, remove the filters. Step four, prime your new filters with fuel and oil. Step five, replace the filters. Step six, remove the oil pan drain bolt to drain the oil. Step seven, replace the oil pan drain bolt to fill the unit with oil. Step eight, clean up and remove all the items to ensure when you start it up, you have a safe start. Step nine, start up the unit, let the oil circulate, and then step 10, power down the unit, check the oil level on the dipstick and adjust the oil level as needed. Document the service date and the engine hours for future reference. And if you benefit from this video, stay tuned for future videos, the next one being an installation of a belt on a refrigeration unit. Starting with the steps, step one is always going to be safety first. Safety in regards to servicing a reefer means you need to make sure that thing's not going to start up while you're in there servicing it. For a reefer unit, luckily, it's pretty simple. There's a, usually a master disconnect switch located on a reefer unit. On a Carrier X47500, that's located right here on the panel. It's going to be this obvious red cover going to pull the cover down, toggle the switch down to off. That's going to ensure that this unit's not going to power up while we're in there servicing it. It's essentially a breaker switch for the entire unit. You've disconnected the breaker. You do not have to be concerned about this unit powering up while you're servicing it. Step two, we're going to do a visual inspection of inside the box to make sure all of the filters we're going to be servicing today are accessible and there's no abnormal wear or tear. So here we've got our oil filter, we've got our fuel filter, and we've also got the containment housing for our air filter. Doing a visual inspection is pretty simple. The main things you want to look for are any frayed or damaged wires. You want to look for any abnormal wear or tear around your hoses. There might be cracks or leaks. Any signs of liquid in any shape or form is always a telltale sign that something's wrong with the unit. Okay, so visually everything looks good. My belts look strong. Actually, they look brand new, which is a great thing. And we're ready to start the, the reefer service. Step three, we want to remove all the old filters in the anticipation for the new filters. So I always like to do the air filter first because it's the easiest and simple to pull out of there on here. Uh, just as with the APN, APU unit, it's just a simple clasp. Flip that clasp up, pull the cover off, and you now have access to your air filter that bad boy out of there. So with the air filter removed, be cognizant that it is a twist install on these units. You're going to want to put it in, get it flush. Once you've got it flush, give it a nice tight right turn. Pull to make sure it's snug. You're good to go. We're going to go ahead and put the cover back on. Locking it in place. You got a tight grip there. Okay, next, let's go ahead and knock out our fuel filter. Sometimes a larger pair of oil wrenches can be useful for these. I've unfortunately only got the smaller pair, so we're going to make it work. Once you've got it loose, you can usually get these free by hand. Make sure your drain bucket's underneath. Usually, if 
if you're pretty gentle with these, you bring them all the way down, toss them in your bucket. Next, we're going to loosen up and remove our oil filter. This one will inevitably leak a little oil as we remove it, so you want to stage your bucket. Let that guy drain out a little bit. Now we've got all our filters removed, it's time to move on to the next step. Priming our, no our new filters, we want to prime our oil filter with oil, and we want to prime our fuel filter with fuel to ensure a good startup when we get this thing kicking and rolling. We're going to prime our oil filter. Just fill it about halfway with oil. Make sure you get some of that oil on the gasket to ensure a nice, strong install and seal on that. You can't fill it to the rim because if you do, when you turn it sideways to install it, you're going to lose a significant amount of oil. Alright, that's hand tight. Don't want to over tighten it. Don't feel comfortable with that. You want to make sure you get a little oil or fuel around the gasket. Oil around the gasket is fine as well. And we're just going to snug that bad boy right up there into the filter housing. Alright, so we've primed our filters. We've replaced our filters. Next step. Step six, it's time to remove the oil pan drain bolt and get the old oil out of the unit. For this KRX 47500, the drain pan bolt is a size 7 8. Again, that's a 7 8 socket. You can use a wrench. You're going to make sure your funnel's in place as you remove the oil pan drain bolt. All right, so we've got our area cleaned up. The oil's been drained. We've got our pan bolt back in the pan. We want to make sure it's snug. Again, you do not want to over tighten these guys. Just make sure it's make sure it's stuck. Step seven, we gotta fill the unit with oil. Our carrier unit here takes 15 quarts of fresh oil. Make sure you research the specifications on the tray or the reefer unit you're working on so you know you put in the right amount of oil on the front end and you're not having to adjust it on the back end. made it to step eight. We want to clean up the area, make sure we don't have anything, any loose items anywhere. When we start this bad boy up, we don't want any sockets or wrenches or rags getting caught in the fan or the belts. Everything looks good. Everything is secure. Everything is tight. We've got our oil in the unit. What we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and power this bad boy up, let the oil circulate through the filters and the engine, and then we're going to kick it off and come back and see where our oil level is at. We've just started up the reefer unit. We've let the oil circulate. Now we've turned it off. We've also turned our master switch back off. That way it doesn't dry fire while we're in here doing our repair. All right, oil circulated. We're gonna take our cap back off. The dipstick is located on the oil cap itself in this unit. We're gonna wipe her clean. So here, you can see that it hasn't quite got into the safe hashes. We're still about a quart short on the dipstick. So we're gonna top it off and adjust and recheck again. And we are safe. So there you have it, folks. That is a step-by-step -step guide how to service a reefer unit from Fresh Freight. You'll find our PDFs of the tools needed, the items needed, as well as the step-by-step -step guide on our website at freshfreight.com slash maintenance. Look forward to seeing you again next time.